Daniel, yeah. Lewa, can you get enough of these dragons <laughs> rising or what? Dragons rising keeps giving us awesome stuff. Sets, figs, villains, heroes, and we are here to talk about the best figures from this theme so far. We're going to talk about each wave, the ninjas, villains, the miscellaneous figures, see which waves do it better, as well as just which figure in general that we really love the most. Yeah, so the rules for this sort of competition or ranking is basically Ninjago Dragons Rising Season 1 was just one wave of sets. Dragons Rising Season 2 was three waves of sets, so we have a lot more different waves of suits. So we're going to be comparing each wave with each other and see which wave of ninja suits are the best, as well as which villains are the best. Let's just start with the first wave of Dragons Rising. How do you feel about these first you know it's not a reboot ninjago dragons rising i was alerted by someone in the comments is not a reboot okay it's a continuation but i feel like this is a fresh reboot of their suits right definitely yeah all brand new suits for everybody including two new ninja aaron and sora very cool to see here with the very unique head molds honestly hair molds but these suits really caught a lot of people off guard they're a little more kind of futuristic and it's unfortunate also that the two parts lock together in the top and bottom so you can't really rotate the head and have the eyes look in different directions but otherwise they look pretty cool it's a it's a fun new direction at least yeah i never knew what was going on with these ones specifically like is the top is it supposed to be cloth or is it supposed to be more of a hard metal or the ones to get were really yeah. the aaron and sora the rest kind of fall flat just in my opinion like nia looks kind of a little basic really solid colors on each of their heads but they're they're not terrible either there's nothing crazy good about them nothing bad about them either we can see in the dragon power suits kind of a even an extra flair an extra take on these with the printed hats transparent arms and these are even cooler i think the gimmick sets all, every year kind of add a little extra something to the suits that does help with the space on top of their hat what is lloyd a master of i don't know like it's pretty like water fire and then what crystal energy guys please let inform me in the comments what is lloyd the ninja of i'm an uneducated plebeian please help me what is lloyd what are his powers no these are pretty cool and then season two happens and we get a little something crazy season two we get basically three complete different set lineups of, of suits and also the gimmick ones. So starting out here, arguably the coolest of all of the new season two suits are the climber suits. When Matt saw these, he thought like they were doom outfits and stuff, but I think they improve on the previous suits in a lot of ways, mostly just by making a lot of cool new armor for the shoulders and having it be dual molded in accent colors is really cool too that just helps a lot because i'm just looking at this season one they have the same top of their hat but yeah adding these dual colors to each of them having dark blue with the blue or silver with the white it really helps but this shoulder piece is just so cool it helps make everything work like you kind of see what the theme is going on we have a climber theme we have ropes we have cool shoulder armor pretty cool wave of minifigures but then we get something a little bit more similar to older ninjago hats am i right yeah this is just the older hoods that we've had since like three four years ago almost at this point so there's nothing really special going on here these are the suits that we find in most of the mechs from earlier in the year uh they're nice they're mostly consistent the only things that kind of are jarring are aaron and sora don't have a matching suit with everyone else but canonically that kind of makes sense because they're the newer to the newer ninja to the group sora is the one that stands out here definitely she got her Proxima Midnight arm printing, but Proxima Midnight herself didn't on her golden arm. That's crazy. These suits are okay. I have not much to talk about. But next wave. I mean, these are the suits used in the tournament. So the tournament of the sources. And that's kind of cool because it uses the same kind of mask hair combo that we originally saw in the first tournament season, in the tournament of elements. So it's cool to see that kind of come back. It's not always necessarily the most exciting thing because we have just the same hair for everyone that we've seen forever. But the biggest highlight here is Sora with her cat ear headphones. That's just a really fun detail they finally brought over from the show. So Sora is really going to be wearing her gaming headphones while doing a spin jitsu tournament. <laughs> but I would say the other highlight here is the Evil J, as he's called, because his suit is completely different from the other ones because he's being marketed as the Evil J. Then we have a little bit of a goal. Okay, I just, I just feel like I've seen these Ninjago figures in the past before. I mean, these are the Rising Dragon Strike suits, uh, ninjas from the gimmick sets. And these are all things we've seen before, like just have the extra armor and hoods. So nothing really new here. 
that completes all of the waves of ninja suits and all of dragons rising which ones can we eliminate out of the running in your opinion for best of the waves i'd get rid of the mech wave okay daniel Leo said it mech wave has been completely eliminated we are left with season one suits climbing garb spinjitsu tournament garb and these golden figures what would be next on the chopping block yeah i'd get rid of the dragon strike ones the golden ones as well as the tournament figs. As cool as that Sora is and the Evil J. I actually agree with you 100%. Honestly, we kind of got to delete this gimmick one as well, like with the translucent yeah. arms. I'm sorry. It is cool. It is cool superpowers, but like, are, does it do his arms turn to fire? Does do her arms turn to water? I don't know, Ninjago fans. Let, please let me know. But I really think it's between the climbing gear and the first wave of dragons rising minifigures which ones do you think are cooler also did aaron not get a climbing suit aaron and sora didn't really get their own climbing suits as far as we're aware so it's just the og ninja which is fine but it would have been nice to have a little more consistency um i would say for season one the sora and aaron are really good the rest of them are not as good but season two the climbing suits are all consistently very good so i would give best Dragon's Rising suit so far to the climber suits. Honestly, I would agree. It is just really sad that Sora and Eren, the new Dragon's Rising editions, aren't even in here with the coolest suits. It has to go to, if we're taking everything into account, it's got to go to this wave right here. This, in our opinion, is the best wave of Ninjago Dragon's Rising suits for the ninjas. But let's talk about villains. Season one wave of villains, we have the Imperium, gold and black and epicness. The Imperium has an awesome color scheme. The gold and black work so well together and the variety of different villain types because you have just the more humanoid guys, you have the more robotic guys, and then you have Lord Raz from Chima. So <laughs> it's just really crazy. And you have color variety within each of these kind of a grunt sub factions. So I think it's a, a really nice lineup. Pure golden ones, the ones that are majority gold, are just look crazy gold's a really strong color but it kind of works futuristic cyborg face printings are just crazy the art design is just kind of out of this world with these robots the pan hat ones and then the samurai hat ones are just spot on i can't believe it so really a lot of good things to say about season one villains how do we feel about the season two villains when lord Roz now turns red and purple it's an interesting mix because it has the two different waves of different colors of villains the blue and purple versus the more red and purple. I think it's a bit of a weaker wave, I'll be oh. honest. Even though it's fun to see Jordana and Cinder. But the Wolf Mask Warrior is just it's not a very cool design. Am I the only one who thinks that? Like, I've never thought they were a cool design. It's just like, it's a little hood and there's nothing underneath. It's like a blank face. One thing that I will say, these are a lot more ninja-like than the Imperium wave. And I'm just going to be the first to go ahead and say mm -hmm. that. It's a lot more of a secret ninja adversary so if if that's what you want this is the way to go but as far as a new unique threat to ninjago i think it would definitely have to go to the imperium villains i agree yeah imperium villains all the way what's really cool is to see lord Raz carry over into season two he's such a great villain well written and very formidable like but, and lord yeah. Raz is voiced by mark hamill guys google it what uh I got Daniel Abel Googling and all that. Brian Drummond. So, okay, but it wouldn't be that crazy because literally Mark Hamill voiced Von Nebula. He voiced two Hero Factory villains, so Ninjago would be like, yeah. sorry for the misdirect. Yeah. So we're getting a point for Ninjago's Rise in Season 1 villains. The Season 1 villains do take the cake for best villain wave of Ninjago Dragons Rising. What is your number one favorite Dragons Rising minifigure throughout all two seasons? Daniel Lewa's favorite minifigure is... I don't know if this is a wild pick, but I love... I love the gold frying pan hat Imperium Guard. He is oh my, my favorite Ninjago Dragons Rising character so far. Well, minifig so far. Character, whatever, but... Like, and actually, my favorite is actually the all-gold samurai robot, so we're not too far off, but those two just gotta take the cake. One of the coolest things about Ninjago is the fact that because we see it change every year and the theme and the setting changes every year, you get the different suits for the ninja, you get a different faction of villains, and that's part of the reason people keep coming back, I think, is to see 
oh, what is this crazy new villain going to be this time? What are the cool new suits we're going to get for the end of this time? Like we got with Seabound, like we got with the Master of the Mountain. Like that is one of my favorite things. And probably maybe it is for you too. So that's why we love talking about these Ninjago minifigs so much. What kind of suits, what kind of characters, what kind of villains do we want to see for the upcoming seasons of Dragons Rising? So Daniel and I, Leo and I keep doing these kind of videos. If we should, go ahead and super smash the subscribe button or maybe even super smash the join button such as Dr. Dan PhD, I'm Lid Me, MC Go, Oliver J, the Ginger Lender, all have done in the past and became part of the notorious Sakuga Squadron and became members on the channel. Thank you so much. If you made it this far in the video, comment Ninjask in the comments below. Wow, this literally is a Pokemon for everything, isn't it?